Welcome to Photokina 2018 TV here at the Camera Rescue booth. We are here with Philip from the Darkroom Lab all the way from California. Uh, Philip has been in the business of uh, developing film for users for over 50 years, I heard. the other Right, day. I'm an old guy. So yeah. tell us, Philip, tell us about what you do and why you're here and what, where you're going with the lab. Yeah, our, our business is uh, called the Darkroom and we're in San Clemente, California, a big surf town on the coast. Uh, we really kind of got our start uh, in, in film, doing a lot of work for the surf industry, lots of E6. Uh, the surf industry, before a lot of it went digital, used to use Velvia 50, push one stop. That was a standard uh, for the, the prominent surfing photographers. We still do uh, uh, work for surf photography, although it's a lot less than it was in the old days. So our roots kind of go back to uh, E6 uh, in the lab. We've been doing it continuously for over 25 years every day. Uh, and we process a lot, it's all dip and dunk. Uh, all of our processes are dip and dunk. We are a very film-centric lab. Uh, we are all in on film. We process and scan uh, all films from 110 pocket camera size to 8x10 sheet film, E6, true black and white, and C41. Uh, since they all are dip and dunk, uh, we can push or pull any of those films. So you change every step, you can change it accordingly? Yeah, we use the Refrima processor, which was a state-of-the-art for dip and dunk processing. Uh, we've purchased a number of them over the years. We have a couple in warehouses for the future because they don't make this stuff I know, anymore. I know. Uh, but at any rate, we're, uh, we're all about film. We, uh, we, we've got our start doing work for camera stores, wholesale work, but have transitioned into being an e-commerce company through the darkroom. Uh, we do work from all over the world now. We have quite a number of customers actually from Germany. Uh, so we've, we've been working on developing our international program, which is one of the reasons why I came to Photokina. And also to meet, uh, you know, face-to-face -face people like, like yourself. Uh -huh. One of the things that I found about, I mean, I knew about the darkroom, it was your great social media, uh, you know, experience, your guys are everywhere, you're doing great work on there, teaching the new generations about how film is used, because that is, there's a leap between the older generation and the younger wanting to learn. So I've seen a lot of that work, which is really good. Uh, your social media, your giveaways, all these things, you guys are really doing great in communicating with the um, community. So are you like, super excited about the Kodak bringing E6 films available as Fuji slowly decreasing. Is, have you tested it out already? Well, have you seen that film? You know, yes, we have seen it and uh, it's very comparable to the old. Uh, frankly, Fuji's been producing Velvia and Provia 100 and Velvia 50 for a long time uninterrupted and those are marvelous films. So. Uh, the addition of Ektachrome is welcome and it's a good one, but it's not a game changer. No, I know. Uh, but it's exciting that there is a new emulsion coming on board, that there's, there's further interest, uh, you know, in, in new film emulsions, as is evidenced by all that we were talking earlier about the, the creative class of films, experimental films, if you will. Uh, we're seeing continued growth in that area in our, in our lab. Uh, so it's, it's interesting to us, in fact, we're working on some stories and uh, a blog now on uh, testing a lot of these films to give first-hand experience. But yeah, our social media, our, uh, our Instagram handle is The Darkroom Lab, uh, and on Facebook, we're The Darkroom Lab. And we, uh, that's where a lot of our passion and drive comes from. I'm very involved with our social media because I really enjoy it. I see it as a way to connect with the, the film community mm -hmm. uh, and to meet new people with, uh, that are excited and passionate and open to learning new things. Uh, so it's, it's the last four or five years when we've really been working hard on our social media. We have a uh, chief photographer on staff, Trev Lee, he manages our social media, uh, all of our engagement, does all of our photography. He's a very well-trained film photographer, went to Hallmark School in Boston before they closed. Uh, so 
yeah, we want to uh, work on educating and engaging, you know, the, the, the growing film community. We're seeing lots of young people coming to film and not coming from a naive standpoint of, oh, I want to try a roll of film, but becoming more immersed and, and quickly educated and up to, up to speed on films. It, I have learned more the last couple, three years about film than I have in the previous 50. And I've been in this business all my life. And it's, I guess, part of it, like they say, through teaching, you learn. Uh -huh. And although I'm not the teacher, uh, I'm, I'm facilitating that and pushing and promoting and driving that. We don't spend money on marketing or advertising or, you know, other stuff, but we, 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 we make an investment, you know, with our, with our social media and our film photography contests where we give away uh, classic film cameras. Uh, we'll be uh, revisiting those, those contests at uh, the beginning of 2019 and running those on a regular basis. One thing that I've noticed in the market is the increase of large format use in the, let's say, non-professional uh, photographers, because all the studios got rid of large format when digital became predominant, and now there's a lot more affordable large format, and there's, a, I've seen a huge increase. Have you noticed an increase in sheet film use? And very, that, not very, compared to the old days, but like, to like no, the, the, very the, the, the definitely uh, over the last, particularly last three years I'm talking, uh, it's grown four or five fold, which is from a small base, but uh, we do sheet film every day. I mean, uh, uh, E6, C41, and black and white. Uh, we have some customers where we'll get, you know, 50, 80 sheets of 8x10 at a time. Uh, so, yeah, it's, uh, it is growing. There's a growing interest in that, as well as 120, medium format photography. Uh, and you bring up a good point. The darkroom, the darkroom is, we are really tailored to film enthusiasts. Uh, we don't claim to be a quote-unquote pro lab. We don't create special profiles or do anything, but we do have highly trained people in the lab. We, we have... Uh, we added it up the beginning of the year. We have over 500 years of ex experience. lab experience in the lab in film, not just not digital, film, film, film. The guys that run our dip and dunk, uh, you know, 40 years plus. So well, we have ki young people come in and they apprentice under the old guys for years, you know, before. It takes, takes years to master. It does, because we talked last night, a lot of it's done by your senses other than your eyes. Your ears are very important, smell, uh, all of your sense of, sense of touch, all of those working together to make sure that we're producing, you know, the optimum quality every time. Uh, we work hard to do a perfect job processing film. It's a little self-serving because if we have a perfectly processed negative or transparency, we're going to have a great opportunity to do great scans from yeah, that. Yeah, you're, you're so, laying out the work to be yeah, easier later on for the yeah, scanning Yeah, everything's people. got to start out right to end, end right. Uh, so there aren't, there aren't any shortcuts. Uh, people ask us, well, I've got 50 rolls of film, you know, can I have a discount? And we don't offer quantity discounts because, you know, our attitude is we put the same amount of work into every one roll. One roll rolls. or 50 rolls, it's understandable. you know, you're all a priority. So, uh, and that way too, if we're giving lots of discounts, then we have to raise the prices for the guy with one roll. And that's not right. That's not so, fair. I understand. so we kind of locked in on that. And I think people understand. Now that we've seen, you've seen many years of film photography, you've seen the present, you've seen the current situation with the community. Where do you see film going in the future? I think we all sense an increase, but what do you think are going to be the biggest things we've got to work on for a future of film users, cameras, um, camera rescue, people like that? So what do you think about the future and what we'll need? Ahead? Yeah, I mean, Juho's doing, I mean, what is needed. He's doing a wonderful job with his team through camera rescue to, you know, to get these, these cameras out into the open and accessible to people. I mean, the reality is cameras have always been viewed as a piece, something of value. 
versus an old cell phone. An old cell phone you'll throw away, right? An old camera, I don't think anybody throws away old cameras. They put them away somewhere because somehow they're valuable. There's a lot of cameras in closets around the world. Uh, people like our camera rescue group uh, will help bring those out. That's a very important part to make cameras accessible. And hopefully to see some good player uh, get back into film in, in, in a, even a small way. Uh, obviously, Lomography does a great job. Uh, that's a different class of camera. Uh, but I think that the future of film is, is very good. I, I don't believe what we're seeing today is a fad at all. I think these are, these are trends that uh, have the ability to lock in for the long term. Mm -hmm. uh, the film photography business is very analogous to the vinyl uh, music industry. And uh, vinyl music uh, is, is revived, you know, particularly with the young. Every town in the U.S. has a couple or three used vinyl stores, you know. So, uh, and there, there, there's a sense of, uh, there's such a difference between vinyl, holding that album, looking at the album cover, uh, hearing the, 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 the classic sound of vinyl off of a needle, you know. That's, it's, it's like when you touch your film. It is. Do, or have the prints, the physical do prints. Do customers uh, pick up the film? Because I know a lot of new people just send it, get it scanned, and then it's like, oh, you can throw it away. We never throw film away. Because we it, we require that all film gets mailed back. That's why there's no, no uh, second thoughts, no remorse. It just has to go back. And we can never make a mistake then. We can't make a mistake of throwing somebody, the wrong person's film away. You I like know, that we're approach. crazy about that. It's like, you know, there's so many chances of errors in a film lab. You've got to build them out of your system in order to do it well. Okay, okay. Uh, so we do always, we always return to film. Can someone bring film to your lab? I know you're mostly internet-based and mailers. You actually have a great system for mailers that you actually take a picture, I think, on your phone? or is it? Yeah, the, we have, uh, in the U.S., with the Postal Service, we have a prepaid mailer so people can just insert up to eight rolls of film it uh, is a very tight seal it's a special material mm -hmm. and then they just drop it in the mail to us and it has US Postal Service tracking so as soon as it hits the Postal Service and the scan you can start seeing where, where your film is, is in the system and then when we receive it we scan it but the customer takes a picture of the envelope which has their uh, their information. Uh, information, their number on it, and that way they can track it all through the system. So there are a number of contacts along the way up until the time that you get a notification on email from us that your pictures are ready to view on Dropbox where we, uh, where we send them to you, them. we download okay, but then, so can someone take film to your location, or is the location more? We do, we do offer people to come in for drop-off only. We don't, we don't allow pickup because it, it, it we would, really aren't. We, yeah, we aren't set up for retail at all. It's okay. it just doesn't fit, and we've talked about it a lot. But you know what? We're 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 lucky. We're fortunate. We're so darn busy in the lab. We just uh, we don't have time. I understand that. I, I mean, I, I appreciate that you're straightforward and things are how they are to make it better for the client and the film to get back. Right. If home. my production manager has to go to the front to help an individual he's not person, doing something important he's inside. not helping 20 customers out in the lab and helping direct and manage our people. And that's that's the danger of what happens in retail is you get sucked into you customer know, attention. Yeah, which is fine. And that's important for retail if you're a retailer. Uh, but that's just not our, not okay. our thing. Uh, it's great to hear about you and your darkroom, uh, the darkroom with uh, Philip. Uh, thank you so much for coming over to Photokina and meeting you. Thank I you so much. I hope to go over to San Clemente and I won't take retail time. We'll take some beer time and, <laughs> and have a drink uh, with a, a beer and cameras over there. So yeah, thank you so much for coming and having time for us. Uh, I hope your business continues and there's a future of machines that keep on working and customers and everything keeps on going well. Great. Well, the Photo Kina show has been marvelous. It's, I haven't been here in many years and it's, uh, it's very stimulating. I look forward now. It's going to start every year, right?
It's going to be yearly, yeah. Yeah, so I look forward to coming back next year. If you don't make it to California to visit, I'll see you next year. Oh, yeah, I'll probably see you next year in May. Okay, so, yeah, thank Nico, you thank you much. so much. Thanks.